Hi, welcome to our video. Um, today we're doing our first collaboration video for the group we're in, the Van Life Society. We are Paul and Corin. We live in Bridge End in South Wales. We are Reds Go Travels. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the highs and lows of motorhoming and how we got here in the first place. We've always enjoyed traveling with young children. We started off traveling with tents in a car. Then we moved up to a caravan, then a second caravan. And then we just really kind of spent a bit of time traveling abroad, didn't we? Yeah, in planes and package holidays. Yeah, nothing too much. City breaks, those kind of things. When I retired from the fire service in 2020, I had the option with the position I was in to buy a motorhome, which is something we'd always thought of, but never really had the capability to do it. So we took the plunge, we tried it and we loved it. So after a year, we upgraded. We changed to this motorhome because we'd just done a very long trip all around Europe uh, in September last year. And we found that the six meter motorhome we had, which is in our previous videos, was just too small for long-term traveling for us with two adults and two dogs. It, we were climbing over each other and we just needed that bit more space. So we decided while we are away, we would come back and start the search for a new motorhome. I just wanted to get out there, see the world. Life is too short. I lost my father last year. You want to make the most of your life. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. And it's a big, wonderful world out there. And we just wanted to see more of it. The one thing that really attracted me to motorhome holidays was I don't particularly like staying in the same place all the time. It's a constantly moving on thing that we like to do. Um, we're not the sort of people that like two weeks in a hotel in the same place. We get bored quite easily. We wanted to travel with our dogs. They're two fantastic little characters. You can take them anywhere. They absolutely love life. They're getting a bit older and we just wanted to have as much fun with them as we could. And they absolutely love the motorhome life, don't oh, they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and for us, it's a very relaxing place to be. It's time to chill out. We're not ready to go full time yet. It's something we do talk about. Who knows, maybe in the future, it's something that we will pursue. Relaxing, life's too short. We like to see the world. And we want to travel with the dogs. That's yes. three reasons why we think motorhoming is great. So the three low points of motorhoming, because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Our number one downside to motorhoming. Things no. go wrong. When things break, they can be expensive. If you can't do something yourself, you've got to entrust a dealer. Your average dealer is about £100 per hour plus fat. When they've got time to fit you in. When getting parts is, is an absolute nightmare. But even new motorhomes have problems. Lows of motorhoming, number two. The running costs. The price of fuel at the moment in the UK has come down. This particular motorhome get about 28 miles to the gallon. Not many people are, are fully aware of the MPG on these things. And it can cost a lot of money to get yourself up and down the country. Uh, we tend to cruise around 60, 65. The last trip we did was roughly, how many thousands? 4,000 miles. 4,000 miles. So when you're paying £7.30 per gallon for fuel alone, 28 miles. Mm. Then you've got your tax, <clears throat> your insurance, your ongoing MOT and so forth. Number three loads of motorhoming we've got the uk the uk is beautiful we do love the uk it's not as easy to motorhome in the uk as it is in europe in europe they have air system sosters stellplatz you can easily use them they are very cheap they are everywhere there are places that you can just pull up and they are happy for you to wild camp there's water drop points for your gray and your black every service you need is pretty easy to find we had seven weeks in september and we never struggled once and we were in 11 different countries then you've got the uk it's a little bit harder here there's not a reliable air system up and running yet Campra have an air system, but it's still, I would say, in its infancy. Other than that, you are looking at campsites. We don't tend to use a lot of campsites. We're on a campsite at the moment in the Lake District. It's very nice. It's a farm. Um, it's a good price as well. Yep. I think I'm paying how much we pay? £28, £28 a night. That's for a full service pitch. It can work out expensive compared to Europe. Uh, when we were abroad, the LPG filling points were absolutely everywhere. In the UK at the moment, if you need to top up your LPG, it's very, very hard and few and far between 
to locate a filling point. So our high points are, number one, we can take the dogs with us. Number two, we find it very relaxing and it's a great way to meet like-minded people. And number three, it just gives us the freedom to go where we want, where we want. And then the low points? I've forgotten them already. Mm. Oh, for God's sake. Unprecedented danger, something about a doomsday clock. Anyway, yeah. That's why we like to motor home. Yes. Because the doomsday clock is ticking. Yes. So we're part of the new group, the Van Life Society, and the rest of our members are Mr. and Mrs. H on tour, and that's Brian and Dawn. We've got the Gators on tour, that's Steve and Anna. We've got the One-Legged Traveller, and that's Chris. Rich B's Life Adventures, that's Richard and Debbie. And Merrimanx Travels, that's Michelle and David. Wheels on Wheels, that's Steve and Virgie. And last but not least, we've got the Combi Chronicles, and that is Lee and Willow. 